Good morning, everyone. We'd like to go ahead and get started. I want to welcome you all to our eighth uh, annual symposium uh, supported by the Institute for Prostate Cancer Research. I welcome you on a beautiful Saturday. This is why we, why we live in the Northwest, so, um, uh, but I appreciate you spending your time here uh, indoors. Uh, we've got an action-packed uh, program uh, for you today. Um, so as I mentioned, this is our eighth annual. Anybody been here all eight? Got a couple, fantastic. Um, so <clears throat> we try to change the format each year so we're not too redundant. There are some themes that still resonate every year, uh, and you'll hear some of those, but updated. And then we also, as I'll talk about in a moment, have something really completely different that we've never done before uh, in the prior uh, iterations of this symposium. So. Um, uh, hopefully it'll all work and that you'll uh, enjoy that as well. This is our agenda. It's a pretty ambitious agenda. Uh, we've broken it up into three uh, broad uh, sections uh, that are uh, divided up somewhat by theme with uh, ability for question and answer after each of those uh, themes. So that's what the chairs are down here for. We've handed out some uh, question and answer cards. Uh, what I found works best is if during the course of the presentation, you write down your questions and then we'll be collecting them before we have the Q&A period and I'll kind of MC that because some of the questions end up being very similar and we'll try to emphasize those if there are um, you know, a lot of consensus that they really need those questions addressed. And then you're also welcome to track down the speakers during the breaks or at lunch, et cetera, and kind of corner them and ask them more detailed questions as well. So <clears throat> I'm not going to go through uh, all the details of the agenda. You have that uh, in, your, in your program as well. Um, <clears throat> so I want to emphasize that this program is really sponsored jointly uh, or a tripartite way between the University of Washington, Fred Hutch, and the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance. We all <laughs> truly work together as partners in efforts to uh, provide uh, new therapeutics, new understanding uh, around prostate cancer. So it truly is a collaborative effort organized by what we call the Institute for Prostate Cancer Research. You have a question? Are you, are you supposed to be mic'd up? I can't hear you. There's a mic here, but um, I'll try to address it more, <clears throat> more closely here. Maybe we can turn up the volume, the AV folks. Great. Um, so again, just emphasizing, there we go, the partnership uh, between all three of these uh, uh, institutions here. So there is a website uh, that describes some of the work ongoing in the Institute for Prostate Cancer Research. So if you can go to the website and you have other questions, you can contact uh, Nola Klempus or the individual investigators about that. So why are we here? What's the goal or the purpose of this symposium? Uh, we have several objectives. First, we want to provide information to all of you, uh, to the community, concerning the current state of research in preventing prostate cancer, screening and treating prostate cancer. We also want to highlight new developments that are occurring here that the University of Washington and Fred Hutch really are leading locally carried out uh, here in Seattle. We do want to provide this as a forum of interaction, so addressing your questions that you may have. And we always encourage you to um, provide feedback for how we could do it better and what kind of themes or, or discussion points you want to hear next year, because we do plan on uh, continuing this every year. We also want to emphasize that this is truly a partnership. Our uh, efforts are really <coughs> Uh, underpinned by all of your participation, your participation in research studies, uh, your advice um, uh, is very important for how we carry out our research to try to prevent and cure prostate cancer. And then in this case, what we plan to do today is provide some real hands-on uh, interactions and practical advice for things that you can do in your day-to-day -day life uh, to improve your health, your quality of life, uh, particularly following a diagnosis of prostate cancer. Still can't hear you. <clears throat> okay. Maybe I'll mic up again later. Uh, so I want to thank uh, Nola Klemfus, who's the main organizer of this symposium. Uh, there, yeah, there she is. 
We also have many volunteers that help out, uh, and you'll meet many of them today. A number of them are young researchers that work in the research labs, as well as the support staff here at uh, Fred Hutch and the University of Washington. There's a very strong development team that helps with philanthropy that underpins a lot of our cutting edge research as a starting point. We have many prostate cancer support groups in the area. A number of the leaders are represented here, uh, and so we are very grateful for those support groups to uh, provide information to all of you. Uh, we have three financial sponsors today, uh, Amgen, Pfizer, and the SCCA Proton Center uh, help underwrite this event with the uh, uh, meals and, and things. And then we've had generous donors, uh, philanthropic donors, some of uh, those are here in the room that also help support this, uh, this event and, and others. So I'm briefly just going to uh, give a background of statistics. Um, uh, of what we're up against, what we're facing uh, currently uh, today. Uh, these statistics come from the American Cancer Society that every year puts out a very nice uh, summary of all the cancer-related statistics in the United States particularly, and they do this state by state. Um, they do it by age groups. They do it by trends over many, many years. Uh, so uh, this is that monograph that you can get online, um, and it's often quite interesting reading. So in the U.S. in 2019, we expect about 1,700,000 new diagnoses of cancer and about 600,000 uh, individuals will die of cancer each year. So that translates to about 1,600 deaths every day due to cancer. Fortunately, these death rates have been declining, but they still obviously represent a huge health burden that we need to address. Today we're talking about prostate cancer. This is the PG version of where the prostate is localized in the body. This is the X-rated version of where the prostate is localized in the body. So, so you can see the, the prostate right here in a very poorly designed strategic location just below the bladder where it interferes often as men age with the normal plumbing of, of where urine flows. So, um, prostate cancer arises here in an, an extraordinarily frequent event. One in nine men are destined to be diagnosed with prostate cancer in the U.S. Um, this is often very curable, as many of you know, as long as it's found to be localized in the prostate. Once it spreads to different places, such as bone, that's where many of our major challenges uh, arise. So for prostate cancer, we expect about 170,000 new cases diagnosed in the U.S. Uh, so again, that emphasizes this one in nine lifetime risk. In the state of Washington, the updated statistics are about 2,400 new diagnoses. New men each year will be diagnosed with prostate cancer, uh, of which 710 deaths uh, per year in our state. Um, so a major burden. In fact, of all the cancers diagnosed in the U.S., each year, 20% of them are prostate cancer in men. This really parallels the frequency of breast cancer diagnosed in women. And it's the second leading cause of death. About 10% of all cancer-related death in men will be due to prostate cancer. This is the trend over uh, the last uh, decade or so. And you can see that the um, age-adjusted death rate due to prostate cancer has actually fallen quite dramatically. There's a lot of debate as to why this has happened. Better screening, possibly. Better treatment for early, early diagnosed prostate cancer. And then also better treatments for advanced prostate cancer can account for this decline in mortality. What we're a little bit worried about is this curve doesn't continue to drop. It actually has a slight increase over the last, these, these, these statistics are through 2015. So you may recall that the recommendations for PSA screening uh, temporarily were called a grade D, meaning don't screen. And so the screening really fell off quite dramatically. That's been recently changed to what we call a grade C, which means an individual should simply discuss it with your physician and have shared decision making. But we're a little concerned that this uptick when PSA screening was um, really falling out of favor has accounted for possibly this uh, increase in, in mortality. So hopefully if PSA screening and improvements in early detection occur, 
we'll continue to see this uh, death rate decline. <clears throat> so let's come back to the uh, symposium agenda today. Um, the main difference between this uh, particular symposium and prior ones is this area where we call where the research happens. So we're not going to keep you in this room uh, during this period of, of, the, uh, of the symposium. We're actually going to take you on a journey, a trip, to three different places. In the laboratory, you're going to see where circulating tumor cells are visualized and potentially analyzed. You're going to see a very um, uh, personalized exercise program uh, and take home messages for how uh, even moderate amounts of exercise can really impact your health, uh, particularly after a diagnosis of prostate cancer. And then um, you will also then see how DNA is extracted. Okay. So these are these uh, three different rotations interspersed with lunch. So when you entered, you were given a tag. You were given a, um, a badge with a different color on it. So we're dividing all of you into four different groups, each color-coded, because we can't get everyone at each of these stations all at once. So that's why we're dividing this up. So you'll have chaperones that uh, will escort you uh, to these different events interspersed with lunch. Okay, so it'll be a little more clear, and I'll explain it to you just before uh, we go to that. I thought this was quite an interesting, uh, sorry, thing to do um, <clears throat> because I was sent this in the mail. This is a kit where you can extract your own DNA, and you can see these bright, energetic young kids um, who are quite interested in uh, figuring out how can they extract and potentially look at their own DNA. So I, I kind of looked at this kit, um, and as part of this, it was show your friends your DNA, um, and they talked about making a necklace out of your DNA, but it doesn't quite look like this necklace. It actually looks like this necklace. So this is DNA, this little white, fluffy, cottony material that these kids extracted and then put in a solution and hung it around their neck as a necklace. So we're not going to give you a necklace today, but we are going to show you how to extract your DNA. So the exercise component really gives you uh, fundamental knowledge of very simple things related to exercise and how much uh, activity counts toward exercise. And I want to emphasize golf does count. Um, and you, you'll hear about that in terms of the amount of energy you burn and the activity that uh, that, that contributes to. A few final details. So there are bathrooms at either side. And there'll be people out there to show you where the restrooms are. I want to thank the uh, support groups and the sponsors. So there'll be tables during the lunch component uh, from the University of Washington's Men Health, Men's Health, uh, from Pfizer, Amgen, and the Proton Center, uh, the Institute for Prostate Cancer Research, again, which supports this event, and then Obliteride, which is an uh, annual fundraising event for cancer research. Uh, and a major portion of that from our prostate cancer team goes directly to support prostate cancer research. So for this IPCR, there'll be a table out there that shows you how to register. There's a walk. There's uh, different bicycle distances. And we're always looking for volunteers as well. So if you're interested, just talk to the uh, obliteride folks at the, at the table uh, during the lunch. <clears throat> These talks will be posted to YouTube. Not sure exactly when they'll make it there, probably about a month uh, after this event. Want to re-emphasize the question cards, write your questions down, we'll pass them uh, to the end of the row, I'll review them, and then you'll be able to ask the, uh, or I'll ask the speakers to um, uh, address those questions, and again, we're always looking for feedback. So I want to thank you again for.